today's presentation um, that uh, I'm going to share with you uh, is on provision. Uh, I will, the first part is a little bit more, more heavy. It's about the European policy on cohesion. Um, the second part, which I hope that we can enjoy at the end, is more light, more pleasant. So stay with me and I uh, hope that uh, you have any uh, concerns we can discuss at the end of this presentation. Um, Oh, I will not be able to handle the slides at all. Okay. Sorry. Um, we are facing today great uh, challenges. Uh, uh, rapid globalization, uh, a lot of competitive uh, pressures uh, on the, due to environmental issues, population changes from city to city, and the migration of flows uh, are is something that we encounter uh, more and more lately. Uh, also, a global climate change is a great issue, and rising um, prices and security are concerning about all the European cities. Uh, these are global challenges that concern all European cities, but there are different approaches on how we can handle these pressures. Uh, there are a lot of disparities, there are a lot of differences, and a lot of different approaches on how each city and how each region you can deal with these challenges. Can we go what is the region? Uh, let's just very rightly define that Eurostat has developed a classification of territorial uh, units uh, for statistics. This is uh, called NAS. And the Polish policy, uh, policy of the European Union that um, is dedicated uh, region, takes into account the NAS two regions, which include from approximately 1 million up to 3 million inhabitants, 3 million inhabitants. Uh, currently, there are uh, 274 um, national regions in the EU. Moving to the next slide. I have, um, uh, in order to illustrate um, uh, this disparity that uh, I've talked before, uh, I have decided to very quickly go through three slides. This is the first one, uh, but um, I don't want to do a lot of numbers, uh, but I would like to, to depict how the, the, the range of these disparities. So with different colors, uh, you can see um, the different ranges of uh, different regions around Europe uh, with regards to an index that is the globalization vulnerability index. Uh, an index is an indication, it's a number that is composed by other numbers. So this globalization index is based on estimated productivity, on employment rate, on high education rate and low education rate in 2020. The source of this one of this figure and of the next ones, the next two ones, uh, is so it's data that is valid and it's also very, very recent. So we can understand that uh, it, this has a basis to, to show that this disparities is not uh, this disparities is not something theoretic and that exists and it's something that the European Union monitors it. It's about globalization. Moving to the next slide, that it is about um, um, demographic change. This is another indication. Again, you see, just take a look on, on the range of the different colors around Europe. On the region of Europe, which you see that we really face different challenges. So, this is another index, another number, another indicator composed by sub indicators, sub numbers, let's say, uh, based, on, based on estimated share of people aged uh, 65 and above total population, based also on the share of work age in total population, and population decline in 2020. So this is an index that shows the graph change around the uh, regions of Europe. And we can see again how the, the discussion, how differently 
and each uh, region in the European Union deals faces with demographic changes. And moving to the third uh, side, um, uh, that it is about uh, the climate change vulnerability index. Uh, here we can see again the colors. It's another very important indication. It's another index, index based on uh, change in population of the barrier class, population in coastal areas below 5 meters, potential drop hazard, vulnerability of features, and during temperature and precipitation changes. Again, you can see the differences in the colors. We really face different. Uh, problems. We have a lot of disparities, so the regions need to use different tools and they need also different economic support in order to deal with these um, uh, challenges. So, we can move on to the next slide, uh, which uh, also, if we, of course, I must say, that uh, the data in this table is not very recent, while in the, in the previous figures the data were very recent. And however, it uh, really shows again how different the situation is in every region. Here we can see that the, in a 2020, in, sorry, the, in 2011, uh, the general person as a percentage, uh, an average percentage of the EU uh, at 28, it, it was. The, 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 the top number in Luxembourg was very uh, different than the uh, lowest number, lowest percentage that encountered in Bulgaria. Uh, also, regarding the employment rate, and remember this is data, the employment rate is about data from 2013. Uh, in Sweden, now, now they are even lower in Greece. In Sweden, back then it was about um, 80% in Greece, it, it was. 53, now I can reassure you that it's a much lower. Uh, while in the United States, the difference in such numbers is only 2.5, and in Japan it is 2. So, in the, uh, why do we have a European cohesion policy? Because we need to reduce disparities between different European regions and um, uh, to achieve, in order to achieve a balanced economic, social, and territorial development. Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, the main, I will not stay long, I will just um, say that uh, in order to reach uh, important goals uh, regarding job creation, business competitiveness, economic growth, sustainable development, and in order to improve citizens' quality of life, uh, the European Union has introduced a, a policy in order to smoothen the disparities. And this is why this is called cohesion policy. Because cohesion, with the, the term cohesion here, we mean that we want to, to be closer. We want to be uh, more, uh, to, to be able to face challenges with a more coherent way. So cohesion policy was a strategy, was influenced by strategic papers, but at the end, it ended like a tool uh, to help other regions face um, in a common way the challenges. Moving on to the next slide, um, we can uh, uh, see that uh, the cohesion policy, in a schematic way, we can see that cohesion policy delivers Europe 2020 strategy. So, as I said before, we have the strategy and we have the, the policy. Um, the policy in order to obtain growth. Uh, through smart solutions, sustainable solution, solutions, and inclusive solutions. Social cohesion is um, uh, the, uh, inclusivity, the third uh, row that you see here, is linked with the cohesion. Because when we are living in a coherent society, we are all included. So we have great, um, uh, we, we are more, we have a uh, we achieve a better uh, social uh, cohesion. Inclusivity is linked uh, with uh, social cohesion here. Um, uh, approximately uh, 352 billion euros were spent 
uh, during the period 2014 until, until 2020 um, in order to implement uh, the cohesion policy and smoothen these disparities around um, uh, Europe. And moving on. Again, the mission is to reduce disparities and the objective, as we said before, and we showed that um, a figure is to promote to growth in lagging regions, the regions that are lagging behind, to improve competitiveness, to address problems with cross-border and transnational spillovers. So moving on. Um, just for the history, uh, for the first time, cohesion policy uh, that, as we say, delivers the Europe 2020 strategy, which is a very important uh, document, was launched in 2010. Uh, so it was uh, a 10 years um, policy, policy that was going to be implemented in the next 10 years. So this is the perfect uh, moment now that we are uh, in mid-2020 uh, to make uh, this um, summary, let's say, this um, uh, uh, to, to see what has happened and uh, we are standing at the moment where the new cohesion policy as we're going to see in a moment is being designed. So it was uh, launched in uh, 2010 as a follow-up to the Lisbon agenda. It is a strategy for small sustainable and inclusive growth and as we said before it is dedicated to the smart agenda and what do we mean in smartness? We mean innovation, education, digital society, we mean that we need a sustainable sustainability agenda regarding climate, energy, and mobility, and an inclusive agenda. And here, as we said before, we have social aspect, the social cohesion aspect. We need to face employment, uh, enhance the skills of uh, employees, go to fight poverty, and to fight social exclusion. Moving on. I will again not stay long here. I will just want to say for the history that um, even, uh, even if I said before that uh, it, is, it dates back, it was born after the Lisbon agenda, the first um, aspects, uh, the first words about uh, cohesion were given in Rome in 1957. Moving on. We have how the, how the cohesion policy we said that we have strategy and we have a policy. But how is this policy apparent? Let's say, how is this policy um, perceived or received uh, in practice by the region? This is delivered through three funds. And uh, so the cohesion policy funding is delivered uh, through the European Regional Development Fund. Um, uh, which uh, together with the uh, European Social Fund uh, add up uh, to the uh, final cohesion fund. Uh, since uh, EU by Lake is a European project, I can say that uh, the funding that the partners get from the European Union um, origins from the European Regional Development Fund. And then partners have to give their own contribution, the national contribution through this European Social Fund, and then the, in total we have the cohesion fund. Moving on, uh, here are the numbers and moving on again. Um, again, um, just shortly to stress out the fact that um, the level of investment is adapted to the level of development meaning that the European Union monitors which regions are more developed and um, it uh, delivers uh, the funds in a way that is approximate, that is um, coherent to the level of uh, development. Moving forward, we will have uh, beyond, beyond time. Just for the history, the budget allocations per member state for, this, uh, for the past programmed period, as we say, for the years from 2014 to 2020. Here you can uh, see, um, of course, this material will be shared with you afterwards, so you can read more carefully. You can always come back and contact me with any questions. Here you can see the total EU allocation cohesion policy in billion euros. Um, so you can see the ranges between countries. Uh, moving on to the next slide. 
Um, the cohesion policy has the market objectives, research innovation, information and communication technologies, competitiveness and SMEs, and low carbon economy. And these go together and correspond to the smartness, to the, one, of the object, one of the goals that we discussed before. Uh, also, it um, uh, has a systematic objective on uh, climate change, environment and resource efficiency, and sustainable transport, and this goes together with uh, the sustainability uh, goal. And finally, regarding the inclusiveness, the third goal of the cohesion policy, uh, it targets employment mobility, social inclusion, better education training, and better administration. And moving on. And um, it is delivered through different programs. Uh, for example, uh, EU BioX is a transnational program because regions between different nations uh, or, in, or uh, different regions, I think it should be a transnational uh, um, uh, program. Uh, but however, we also have cross border collaboration between uh, bordering uh, countries. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, we also have uh, the European Union also has mind uh, while designing how uh, to implement cohesion policy different macro regional strategies. What do we mean by the term macro region? There are different macro regions: the Baltic region, the Danube region, and the Atlantic and Ionian region. So these are um, more than one region from more than one country. But the share specific challenges, uh, so the European Union um, tries to give them the same tools, let's say, in order to fight the common challenges in a coherent way. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting uh, closer to the most pleasant uh, part um, uh, of uh, the presentation. Uh, I always remember, I try to remember that um, uh, I have young artists in the audience, so I will try to uh, uh, pro provide some amusing mom moments at the end, and we all enjoy just a few, very few words about the structure of the new policy proposal. I don't want us again to get into the numbers. I just want to stress out that um, green, the um, let's say the the, the, the the darker green, the darkest green um, uh, part of this circle corresponds to the cohesion and values, and this corresponds to the biggest amount of money that's going to be spent for the next six years through the cohesion policy, which means. Which means that cohesion, so, so, so cohesion means a lot for the European Union, and some money is going to be, and the most money of the funds are going to be spent on that. Going on, moving on to the next slide. Now, we have talked a lot about policy. I was, I, I, in the beginning, I was wondering if I should put this uh, uh, slide in the beginning or if it's better to keep it in the middle. And I decided to keep it in the middle, the definition of social cohesion. Uh, we talked a lot about the disparities, disparities uh, about clim climate and how to mitigate climate, disparities about environment, how to mitigate the environment. But we have also these great disparities about social um, uh, issues. So we need a cohesive society that works, that works. And what does that mean? It means that we need to all work to, uh, towards the well being, that the society needs to work towards the well, the well being of its members. It, it needs to fight exclusion and mar marginalization. It needs to create a sense of belonging, to promote trust to offer its members an opportunity of upward mobility, rising from the lower to a higher social class or status or whatever for anybody personally means that I want to rise from a lower to a higher um, uh, class. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Um, I, I try to uh, demonstrate some ways on how we, can, we use real arts in order to promote social cohesion. 
to promote social cohesion, what does it mean? Remember what we just said, huh? how to make people um, uh, have a better well being, have a better sense of belonging, understand better their, their identity, uh, they can fight better poverty. Uh, so, how can arts promote social cohesion? So one way to strengthen community cohesion and feelings of belonging is through implementing cultural and arts programs. Art and culture have really the ability to bring people together through shared experiences. This is why I really believe that the selection of this module for this specific uh, open air university was really well targeted. I, I, I see that uh, we have a problem. With the sound. Sorry to interrupt, Eleni, but uh, we are uh, hearing you really bad, and uh, I think we are missing lots of things that you are saying. So uh, maybe if we can turn off the video, it will help. Uh, it's just a suggestion, but. Uh... Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Sorry. No, no, no problem. I just stopped it. Is okay. it better now? Let's see. Let's see. Let's try. Oh, oh, what a pity. Yes. Um, recent studies have, so, uh, have shown that art and culture... Can you hear me any better? Yes, much better. <laughs> At least for oh. me. Okay. So, uh, recent studies have shown that the art and the culture actually add to the job market, job creation, and therefore promote economic growth. Uh, programs with cultural significance, such as dance, music, painting, writing, and theater, enable individuals, especially youth, young people, to express their feelings and emotions. Uh, this positively contributes to their mental health and adds to their psychological development, helping them fashion their uh, position in uh, society. Uh, moving on again. Um, I tried to uh, um, make uh, this presentation also uh, a little bit more updated uh, with the current situation with COVID-19. Uh, so I tried to find some um, uh, uh, slides, uh, to add some slides uh, regarding how people from different um, uh, areas of the world uh, have used arts in order to fight uh, uh, their feelings. I'm very glad to read that uh, you are uh, uh, you're better. Great. Oh, I'm so pleased. So um, here we can see a 14 years old uh, girl from uh, Sri Lanka, uh, Sandithi from Colombo, who says, before the lockdown, I used to draw fun and creative stuff. But after the lockdown, I started to draw the things I missed the most. So she drew a picture of a girl, if you can see, uh, on your um, right hand corner she draw a girl a picture of a girl sitting apart wearing a face mask with dancers in the background and she said of the lock of the lockdown it has made me feel very lonely because i'm only a child so this this kid did it not only express her, her, her feelings uh, through uh, her art through her favorite um, art uh, expression, maybe painting, but also uh, but she also made th that feeling public. She, she, she shared that feeling. Moving on to the next slide. Um, I would like to share with you an act uh, or a, a movement uh, of UNESCO, maybe. Maybe some of you would be interested in that. Uh, so UNESCO has launched uh, the Resiliarta movement, which among other things, will consist of a series of global virtual debates with uh, renowned artists and uh, draw support for the cultural world uh, throughout the crisis. Let's not play that link now because I have better surprises for you next and I, I see that we are running out of time. So moving, moving on to the next uh, slide, please. Here again, we can see um, a young, what a young artist uh, has uh, drawn, uh, an artwork completed by Jamal Durant, uh, raising awareness on the COVID-19 pandemic again and the importance of social distancing. Again, expression of arts 
uh, he tries to use, he uses um, his, um, this method of expression in order to express his loneliness. And also he passes a message to the society and he brings society, uh, he, he delivers unity to society. So that's very uh, important. And moving on to the next slide. We sing and we sang a lot during the times of crisis. Why do we do that? Because music creates a sense of belonging and participation. That's what social cohesion does. And uh, uh, that, that's what social cohesion looks for, to, to create a better sense of belonging and participation, as we said. It is an antidote to the growing sense of alienation and isolation in society in general, even more so now we are being tasked to actively practice social distancing and isolation. We were, now things are getting moving again, but we don't know what happens in the near future. Yet. Social distancing and geographical isolation do not have to result in social isolation. In the face of uncertainty and panic, music is a social balm of soothing anxiety, enhancing community connections and acting in defiance uh, of the threat to community spirit. Moving on to the next slide. Um, I would like, if possible, to um, make it again. We have, but we have faced the success, a lot of challenges uh, in this uh, one uh, 45 minutes already. I would like you, <laughs> Monica, you're laughing. I, uh, I would like us uh, to play the first link, uh, if possible. Mm -hmm. The okay. first one, okay. Mm -hmm. And I hope you can listen to it. Let me check. Or see? maybe, Paula, you could uh, copy and paste uh, the link uh, to... Or, or you should I do that, the maybe? YouTube? Can you see the YouTube or not? Because I don't know if I'm sharing... I can't, it. but if you can see that, it's okay for me. No, no, just a moment. Can you see now? The YouTube? Wait. No, the video, no I can't the see the edge. video, but, but if Wait. you can, don't worry for me. No, no, we, no, no, no. Wait. We are seeing the presentation yet. Yes. Okay. That, uh, that's why, Paula, that's why I said share it with audio. Yeah, yeah, just a moment, just a moment. Okay, okay, no problem. I will, I will share now. Um, okay. Okay. Now you can see the YouTube? Uh, yes. Yes? Can mm -hmm. you see? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me try. So this was this was a uh, this was a video from people uh, of people from China uh, from Wuhan uh, mm -hmm. trying to um, to increase their uh, social cohesion and to share their voices in, in, through this pandemic. And the final um, uh, link that I would like to play is the next, is the other one, uh, Paula, in this uh, slide. And with this, I am ending the presentation too. It's uh, from Italy. It it lasts for four minutes, and uh, I think that we will be on time finally. Mm.
Okay. So this was all from my side. Uh, you can uh, now confess that uh, you could hear me badly in the beginning because the first part of the presentation was a little bit heavy <laughs> and a little bit boring. You can confess that. I can bear with that. In any case, um, I, I would be happy to, to stay with you for as long as uh, you need uh, for now to discuss anything or to uh, make something clear or go back to some slides. A anything. Thank you so much for your time.